This video continues from the introduction to elevations. So here we want to go through and be developing our elevations from our cabin design we've been recently producing. So what we want to do is copy that floor plan of the cabin design onto the architecture Otways uh, board positioned in here. Notice that we're going to now be starting to work at a scale of 1 to 100, then 1 to 50. I'm just going to be using this separate artboard to make it a little bit easier. So once you've copied it across, it still will be at a 1 to 50 scale. So we need to go through and scale it. So you'll be able to select it and right click and go to transform and then scale. And we want to scale that at 50% uh, so it's going from 1 to 50, sorry, from 1 to 50 to 1 to 100. And then also just make sure you're scaling the stroke, otherwise you'll notice that the walls are going to be appearing too thick. This is to provide the opportunity to be placing the elevations surrounding our design. The next step is just locking this design to the artboard so it, we can't interfere with it. So selecting it and going to Object, Lock, Selection. Now what I've done here is I've already gone through and completed that. The next step is proceeding on to produce those elevations that surround it. And to make this video a bit shorter and to speed things up a bit, I've gone through and already drawn those elevations which we'll now go through and discuss. Start with the western elevation. Turning on my guides. And so these should be familiar to you with the floor plan. And so you can just be selecting control, colon, and remember you're dragging out the guides from the ruler down to identify where those walls are. So our character here is looking upon the wall and they're going to be seeing obviously the wall length and the positioning of these windows. And that's what we need to be drawing over here for the elevation. And that's where this, I guess, character and these shapes come into play. So this wall is identified as that wide. And now we need to determine the length of that wall. And for this task, I'd be suggesting walls between a minimum of three meters high and maybe a maximum of four and a half meters high. So a scale of one to 100, if it's three meters, it's gonna be 30. These two little shapes I've just created. And so they're determining, I don't want any windows below that height. So it's not going all the way to the floor. And this red shape, that is the height of what a typical door will be. So 24 or 2.4 meters. So between 2.2 to 2.4 is probably the, the height of an overall door. Now we can quickly put in these two windows. So notice there we've gone through and included the windows and we've got a character there. So obviously this window being in the toilet, we want it to be a lot higher. So there for, um, for, for privacy sort of reasons. Uh, and so that, you know, tends to suit that space really well. Windows are represented in elevations as thin lined rectangles and frames are shown simply and the direction of the opening is shown with a diagonal V. So let's proceed to do that. Select both shapes. Go to Object, Path, and offset that path. 0.25 will tend to give a really good result, and then be selecting that, and that's depicting the frames. Now in some spaces, we're gonna to wanna to include that, or indicate that these windows can be easily opened. And so that's just including that V. Now let's proceed on to the western, sorry, eastern elevation. I've identified where the window is here, um, and I can, and the overall height. So that's 2.4 meters once again. So there's continuity that runs all the way around the building. I'll turn on my guides once again. So now we want to include the door. So this window is signifying that window there. And so the door we're going to be placing within this space here. Doors are represented 
in elevations on page 34, and this will be in the video description, as plain rectangles without handles, so as represented there. And so therefore we've completed that eastern elevation, including the door. Moving down down to the southern elevation, you might have noticed some other different shapes I've got in here, so that's just representing the bottom of the windows there. Then I've got these two because within this floor plan, I've got bunk beds, whereas we're only seeing the top bunk at the moment or potentially the bottom bunk. And so we want to put some windows in here at the height of those bunks. Looking online, you're going to be able to source dimensions for furnishings that you might need to accommodate, especially for things like window positions. So this is just on the IKEA website. Um, one of the images will tend to have the dimensions of the product. And so here I've gone through and positioned that at 50 centimetres height from the ground uh, to accommodate that bottom bunk window. And then this one at 1.6 metres for the upper bunk as displayed here. Using the rectangle, I'm just gonna go through and create a window for both of those positions at a height, I think of 25 centimeters, so 2.5 would accommodate really well. Then I'd go through and offset both of these um, similar to the arrangement here, so it's presenting the frame, and then also putting in that um, arrow to indicate the opening the northern elevation, you can notice I've gone through included all the windows and the longer window sourced at the northern face. Um, this shape can obviously be referenced from the south. And so all you'll need to do is be reflecting it on its horizontal axis. So transform and reflect, and that will give us that option from the uh, southern view.